milady, the weaver of time, mother of history, author of all that has ever been. Indeed, Sir Imp, as surely as you are he who chronicles all that I weave. Astounding! Unbelievable! I have so many questions for you, so much to ask, so much to say. You have brought guests, I see. Strange. Very strange guests. My reaction exactly, milady. It was their arrival here at the end of time that instigated my finding you. But why? Surely you must know. This is a question better put to our guests themselves. Tell us, how did you arrive upon this plane? A stone? So... It was a stone that caused the great shock of energy that brought you here, and it infused you with new life as well. Is that so? Not like this, no. What happened to you is unique in all my work. Never had I experienced something so... contrary to my nature. To weave something I had not seen, had not expected. Life does not simply spring into existence, you see. But yours has. You appeared before me from the moment you came into contact with that stone. Starstone. I now know it to be called. But, Madam Weaver, how is it possible? Do you not see all? Have you not woven all that is and could ever be into your tapestry? Like the stones, your guests are a mystery. To me. I see them before me in this world, but their likenesses appeared not upon my tapestry source hunters. It would seem that yourselves and Starstone are inextricably linked. Why and how, I cannot say, but I do believe that finding more stones will reveal to me who you yourselves. Starstone is not what it seems, source hunter. Its true nature must be part of a greater secret. A secret lost, even to... Do you see what violence my work has suffered? What wounds lay upon the tapestry of time? Mysteries of all time. Gaps in history. Oh, how they've tormented... It would appear that Starstone transforms at your touch. Granting me new thread by which to mend the tapestry. Thus, it restores time itself. I see what the void would shrink, Starstone restores. Yes, though I cannot explain why this Starstone is the antidote to the void's ravishment of our realm. If we do not restore time, if we do not discover the true nature of these stones, the void will consume us all. Indeed you must, though I may not yet understand why. It seems that you and you alone can unlock the powers within Starstone. Yet we are not the only entities who know these stones to be so much more. The why, of course! That's what they were doing. I have recorded their doings, you see. Collectors of Starstone, more and more by the day. Now I understand. They'd keep the stones from our reach. They'd prevent the mending of time. Without these stones, Hunter, there will be no Rivalon. The entire tapestry will crumble. Even this plane will fall victim to the Void's insatiable hunger. That shall never be, milady. 
As sure as Zix comes before Zax, we will put a stop to it. First we mend the tapestry, then we stop the boy. Please, our most mysterious guest. Are you ready? Are you willing? Will you hunt out the stones? Will you help us restore? So, what do you think? Not but a moment ago we were hunting source in Rivalon. And now we're being told that we alone can prevent the end of time by way of some magical stones. What do you make of it? We can't deny our reaction to Starstone. There must be something to all of this, mad as it may seem. What it be, Source has Still, you? it's quite a leap from finding a strange stone to play. The glint in your gaze and the set of your brow suggest to me that you've not given up on our dear old Rivalon, not just yet. No, with you searching out Starstone, I believe we'll mend the tapestry in no time. We'll find out just who you are and how exactly to send the void back to wherever it came from. But you'll need a way to travel between Rivalon and this homestead, won't you? Who wouldn't want to see what fantastic changes your search will yield? And who knows what the Weaver might do. Luckily, the power of portals is known to you, so I'll let you in on the little secret of how to transport back and forth from the end of time. Uh, just, you know, don't go sharing it around. Off you go, then. You've Starstone to find, and I've a tapestry to examine. Surely there must be some clue here as to how on earth you're related to the end of time. Cross my heart, hope to fade in the void, I honestly don't know. But ask her. If she claims it is so, perhaps she knows why. Like the imp said to the ballista operator, shoot! Wouldn't it just? Would that I had a Starstone sightseeing guide, but alas, such a booklet does not exist. Just like yourselves, Starstones are curiously absent from history, both in my writings and on the Tapestry of Time. From what I can gather, though, they were once cherished by devious sorcerers whose reign ended long ago. The stones are ruins, caves, the lairs of long-forgotten evils. Those are the dens you should frequent. Two more pieces of advice. Don't go unarmed and consult with my agent. Neither do I, but the mere fact that activated Starstone has set the Weaver of Time weaving again more than implies that it and the Void Dragon are natural enemies. This in turn more than implies that you are the Void's natural enemy, for it is you who is setting new events in motion. You who is handing the Weaver new threads. And that which she is weaving is more than an ornament to decorate the shelter plane. It is both history. We may not understand the how yet, but our aim is clear. We shall save creation from the grip of the void. Now, isn't that a lovely mission? Oh, I don't know if I'm more than those things per se, but... Having been given a divine mission does have its perks. Old age can't touch me, that's one. Immortality is mine, as long as no one skewers me with a sword. And even then, not. But of course, I have a price to pay for something that is priceless. It is my duty to record all of history and an art. So gather those star stones so that we may know the history that was lost. Know so that we must not repeat what leads us to this dangerous precipice, but do better and close the lonesome observing the frontier of creation. 
Surfing the vibrant tide of the eons, always approaching yet never reaching shore. Well, yes, actually. I don't mean to complain, but one certainly doesn't mind a bit. Perhaps you can imagine the profound pleasure it is to have made the weaver's acquaintance after all these years. I can hardly wait to pick her brain about the great battle of the sons of Sigurd. The last before you go, Source Hunter, a final word. Once you return to Rivalon, there will be someone waiting for I hope he'll be able to help you as much as he can. Time, I need half. How welcome you are upon this realm, our most honored guest. I hope you begin to find this place more familiar. In the ethereal threads of eternity, do I record the deeds of gods and men, of beasts and spectral apparitions. The drift of continents through changing seas, the rise and fall of empires, the shift of every grain of sand on every beach, the fall of every raindrop on every world, the all but imperceptible... Except, it seems, you. Ask, and I shall answer, if I can. I am the Weaver of Time, as I have told you. Though my existence is one that falls behind and yet far exceeds the verb, I am but what I am, and that is task. It is the same for the historian. Chroniclers both are we of the- Perhaps we are one and the same. Task multiplied by two. Who has made us? I do not know. Am I the beginning? And am I to be the end? Who shall say? Perhaps I am the first thing in creation. Perhaps I am creation. Perhaps I am the creator. Or maybe it is you, you who makes die quite so. Your absence, it should be an impossibility, but no matter where I look, you cannot be found. I do not know you, which makes you my one perennial imperfection, a blind spot in the eye of time. But perchance I may be cured of this blindness, Perchance the blemish may be undone, and time can be redeemed. What it is, is but a seed bereft of sun and water. What it could be, that is what the star stones will tell us. What it is, is but the end. What it I reside in another realm altogether. But ever since the end of time appeared in these deep, dark skies, I materialized here, as if forced to watch the one thing that is unwatchable, unendurable. A thankless task that you may yet free me from forever. I think that perhaps you can redeem time, because you create time. Indeed, you have set in motion an event I no longer held possible. Know that no longer I did weave. I sat here, at the end of time, and watched on as the void frays the fabric of time like a terrified god that fears the offspring of his own creations. But suddenly there was you. You who stirred the life within the stones. These stones, children of stars, they place new ribbons along my fingers like phantoms out of time. New threads emerged, and I began to weave anew. Starstone gives me new strands to braid into the tapestry. And because you give Starstone these Starstones, please seek them so that time may yet be mended. Please, for the sake of all that lives and all that loves, seek them so that the void may yet devour itself alone. Alas, the answers to those questions still elude me. You and Starstone remain the in- A hidden answer lies behind this veil of inscrutability, though. 
for the link between you and the stones reveals that your dust I believe that star stones will not lead you to new places of wonder only. No. They will also lead to new knowledge through the restoration of the threads of o <laughs> Oh Hunter. I have no need for company. Like I have no need for air or appetite or affection. All and yet, I do enjoy your companionship. For you may prove The Lady of Time! The Weaver of I am the last chest! The last chest! The last chest! If you believe yourself worthy of rifling through my ample treasures, I do dare you to prove it! Find my four sisters, no more than one in each of the realms of your all-encompassing chronicles. Source Hunters, I welcome you once again to the realm of Rivalon after your travels through the chasms of space. Nice to have found a shelter, wouldn't you agree? Where you can come to no harm. I know the Imp Historian has told you about his agent on Rivalon, and that agent is I. So, now that you know of the alliance between me and Sir Zigzax, let us turn to the business at hand. Starstone. So it is, and so it should continue to be. For I suspect his foul murder and the plight of dying time are somehow inter- Dark webs are being woven around these parts, and it is my firm belief star stones are the flies the sorcerer spiders are trying to catch. It can therefore hardly be a coincidence that Counselor Jake- That means the task you have been given remains crucial. Find the assassin that did away with Jake, for you're bound to stumble upon Starstone along the way. While you were being lectured by our friend the Historian and the Grand Dame of Time, I snuck into his The advantage of being a cat, you know. You go where you please with impunity. And sometimes the Lady of the House- That's where I saw them in a cabinet. Mere slivers, but specks of Starstones nonetheless. They lay there, silent and innocent, though bloody murder may have been committed in their name. Don't we all long for a sanctuary where our worldly troubles can be held at bay? A bed or a basket so snug it becomes... But perhaps I speak only for myself, not for veterans such as yourselves that by necessity call any patch of ground they rest upon home. Like any cat worth its salt, though, I deeply cherish a secret refuge unbeknownst to anyone. To be able to repose without a care is such a precious circumstance, save it all too seldomly. Let me phrase it like zigzags might. A universe without time is like a pen without ink. A pointless instrument stripped of the potential of creation. It is void. I'll not pretend to have all the answers, all that I understand, all that is happening here and out there among the stars, but I do. If Zigzag's worries, I worry. 
we are talking about a creature, after all, that has reclined among the divines as nonchalantly as you and I lays beside the hearths of home. I met him first, a long time ago, out in the wastes of Uthal Gore. He wondered aloud what on earth a cat was doing out there in the scorching desert. Then so I told him who I was and showed him my human form. He laughed and marveled and told me stories about his travels. In the end, he even shared his great sorrow with me. The unspeakable thing you saw through his looking lens. I was awed and frightened, but swore to help him in any... Oh, before you go, here, take this teleporter pyramid. A handy toy indeed that Zigzags asked me to give to you. You'll need the other one too if you want to make use of its powers, but... Alas, I seem to have misplaced it. Don't worry, though. Use this one here, and now that this matter has been settled, hunters, I shall detain you no longer. But rest assured, I'll do my share of hunting, too. So if you spot a white cat during your travels, do stop. tighter than the treasury. No, I know it's here somewhere. I wouldn't want to ruin this particular batch of party elixir. Thank you. Thank you eternally for your help. Though your reaction to the healing stone... That strange reaction you caused. Blue lightning from a healing stone. I've never seen anything like it. And the stone looks different now, too. Like it's devoid of life. I... I begin to wonder. I've been studying under Theleron for some time now, but that task, being asked to play the gods, was the first time I've ever questioned my... well, suitability for the work. I've a passion for this work, you see. A passion to see things put in order. From a flesh wound healed to an entire city made resistant to a fatal illness. What right has something as trivial as a wound or a sense... appears to be locked.
Say, uh, no one's around. You wouldn't raise a fuss if I uh, borrowed one of these fish, would you? Borrow, indeed. I'll sooner meet a cat wizard than see that merchant repaid. Come now, I'll be good for it, I swear! I never would have dreamt of resorting to petty theft during better times, but what choice have I got now? If it's steal or starve, I'll choose... Oh, my story's tired by now. I was a happy enough, a prosperous enough, before these lean times around Sysiel. So what do you think? Should I snag a fish? That merchant has to eat too, you know. Leave the fish alone. Yes, you know what they say about giving a man a fish. This man... <sighs> I suppose you've got a point. A hungry man, you know. That thief is free for now. But I wonder how long it'll be until his growling belly seduces him back onto the crooked path. Thank you for making that would-be thief see reason. I only hope your instruction lasts. The last thing the plagued people of Sysiel need is a thief among them. Get it while it's fresh! This batch is only hours from the sea. Red and orange, yellow and green, the finest veggies Sysiel's ever seen. Worm, brew and spice and stir and churn. Fresh haddock, move it for fryer. Potions to be muscle you, scrolls to entussel you. Well, hello there. <laughs> Well, Mayor Cecil will be happy to see the likes of a source hunter. Welcome to the town hall of Sysiel. Oh, golly gosh! One who flaunts the highways and byways of silly old Sysiel with the easy elegance of a puss with her tail in the air. I do declare such a sight is rather rare around here. But where are my manners? I am Maxine, and you must be one of those hunters one hears so much about. Charmed, I'm sure. Brrr, I'm the mayor's cat, don't you know? Born and raised on velvets and viands of most exquisite varieties. Maxine rhymes with queen, after all, and but of course, darling, be my guest. Heavens forbid! <laughs> No, fear is rather too strong a term there, hunter dearest. The predator's instinct is a trait we share, you and I. And though those rancid ramblers may not be quite as easy to put to the claw as mice are, I assure you, they are just as e Oh, this quaint little town is a tad too parochial for one of my more urbane tastes. But one has to make do, hasn't one? The fresh sea air does go to great lengths to invigorate one's spirit, that much I'll admit. And it is rather jolly to watch the ships sail in li What? Oh, it's you. Come closer, then. Closer, huh? My ears aren't what they used to be. Nor my eyes, for that matter. Yes, my elf? What elf? Oh, myself. I am Cecil, mayor of Sysiel, and husband of the stately Cecilia. I've been the mayor here for decades, and I'm quite eager to see Sysiel through these difficult times. What? Oh, you mean Sysiel. Very difficult times indeed. As though the death of Jake and by source magic no less weren't enough. We're also facing the undead have overrun all but one northern trade route, while the orcs are making a habit of savaging our beaches. 
That's not to mention that at the top of this whole caboodle, there's rumors of some new religious sect or cult or some such sticking its tendrils into the innocent, seven-fearing folks of Sysiu. And, uh, <clears throat> while we're on the subject of troubles, I myself have a private matter I'd like to bring to your attention. It involves a magic relic I rather foolishly sought, a weapon called the Staff of Pergamon. Jake murdered? Oh, yes. Yes, now I recall. Indeed, I could hardly believe it myself. The Counselor and I have certainly had our differences over the years, but old squabbles evaporate under such circumstances. Most of the townsfolk are certain Jake's wife, Esmeralda, is responsible. In fact, the Legion have taken her into protective custody to keep her safe from the mob. As you can imagine, I've known Esmeralda for years. That business between her and the Duke of Ferrell was always a bit um, suggestive. But I've never had cause to suspect her of violence. Still, one never knows for sure. An all right bloke, apart from all this Esmeralda nonsense, the whole town knows the only goal of his business trips to Sicil is to spend a night or two at the King Crab Inn with Mrs. Counselor. What? The undead? Yes, for the past two years, those blasted skeletons have all but suffocated this city. With all but one trade route overrun, Sicil's once torrential commerce has slowed to a pathetic... A what of what now? Oh, you're speaking gibberish. Ah, you mean the staff of Pergamon. Yes, yes. I was expecting a shipment of weapons, and among the cargo was this very powerful, very rare staff. I met Cecil proved an old fool, though, for the merchant slated to deliver it to me has just informed me that the damn thing has gone missing. I fear it may have fallen into the wrong hands, and I w His name is Conrad, captain of the Tide Splitter, a merchant ship still docked at the Sicil Harbor. You can talk to him if you think it'd help. The staff itself contains a shard of an ore, highly valued for its use in the weapons of war. I know use of the material to be forbidden, but I was desperate to do something to aid the townsfolk against the undead. Well, I... I do believe that something your parents ought to have discussed with you long ago, Source Hunter. But I suppose if... if you really don't... Ah, you see, when a lady and a fellow find each other rather nice, well, rather more than nice... Oh, this is nonsense. I'm the mayor for the seventh sake. I can't be bothered to chat all day about the birds and the bees when Sicil's under siege by orcs, undead, and cultists. That depends. What kind of berries are you interested in, exactly? Ah, the library. Yes, yes, you must have a visit. It's the gem of Sicil. Would you like to have a look? Marvelous! What? Oh, yes. This library is the jewel in Sicil's crown, the beacon of culture and learning in our fair city. My Victoria has every volume you could possibly imagine, and she's got every speck of information about this place packed into her brilliant brain. Yes, Victoria's come a long way from that little bundle of claws and teeth I adopted so long ago. Ah. It brings a tear to my eye just seeing her here among her. What? Oh, yes, yes. I'll be on my way back downstairs now. Sometimes I think these books sprout little legs in the night. The Lesser the Key of Sadakandras. A sauce hunter. Oh, what a sight for sauce, Sicilian eye. Me? I live alone here in town. It used to be that my younger brother Tom and I were practically joined at the hip, but that's all changed now. Oh, he's always been something of a rascal, calling his petty hooliganism adventuring and endlessly worrying my poor mind. But for my part, I encouraged him to join the Legion. He even got him sparring with Captain Orius now and then. But then those blast that band of... Oh, I don't even know what to call them. Well, they're his heroes and I simply couldn't prevent him from going to see them. That one meeting was all it took for Tom to run off. Nonsense. The Pseudomonarchia Daemonum. And a first edition, too. 
Most we'll have none of that, do you hear? Demonology for dumbbells. Omnes autem mali demones quam. What? What is this? Who are you to interrupt my musings? By Naga, the protector, they have the manners of boors, these boatmen of Sicil. Oh, but perhaps I spoke too soon. Perhaps I was mistaken, for you hardly resemble the local fisher folk, which, incidentally, is a compliment of copious dimensions indeed. No, a source hunter, that is what you are. Yes, a stalker of sorcery, a chaser of charms pernicious. In truth, I cannot go so far as to say it is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, for I take no pleasure in the company. Why? Simply because you hunt source, and I, Jehan, hunt demons. You are aware, of course, that quite often both of these pests freak now. I hate what I hunt, but I respect its cunning. Should I? This is a sentiment I'm quite certain you must recognize. Let there be strength in cunning, yes, but also in numbers. On one condition, that on our joint travels we will never deal with demonic entities, no matter how tempting their propositions. Very well. There will be no deals with demons. Agreed. Nothing good ever came from bargaining with those devils at- Most gratifying. I see you are firm of purpose and thereby ready to descend. Descend into the madness that is sorcery. Into the depths where demons dance. Gladly shall I follow you into the abyss. Onward, blood and triumph await. Dinor. The brief history of sorcery still hasn't been returned. Felleron will have to pay yet another fine. Kaj Dinor. The brief history of sorcery still hasn't been returned. Felleron will have to pay yet another fine. In the name of Amun Hur, 
I bid thee Tujda get a hal. Be welcome, human. My library is yours, as I hope your friendship is mine. I am Victoria, daughter of Mayor Cecil. Oh, I know what you're thinking. The likeness isn't exactly striking, is it? When I was very young, you see, I must have been cast out by my tribe, for I was found in a wicker basket floating past Sicil toward the sea. The fisherman who found me would have drowned me on the spot, for I am an orc after all. But praise be Amon Hor, dear Cecil was among the gathered crowd, and he took he raised me like I was his own. This kindest of souls taught me the language of men, their customs and their letters. Thus, I became the city's librarian, a position indeed you may. The wisdom I here hoard is yours to peruse and even take with you. All I can ask is that you return the books you borrow. Kaj Dinor. A brief history of sorcery still hasn't been returned. Teleron will have to pay yet another fine. Volume one, volume two, but where has the third one gone? Shatsu. Sometimes I think these books sprout little legs in the night. Volume one, volume two. But where has the third one gone? Shatsu. Sometimes I think these books sprout little legs in the night. Place this book. What? Oh, it's you! What news? No, no. All my clothes are in fine condition, thanks. I've been going to the same tailor for years. Maxine? What in heaven's name are you? Oh, you mean I spent months trying to teach that worthless hound how to fetch, and it sat through every lesson looking at me as if I were an idiot? Man's best. I've always been more fond of cats myself. Meow. Such beauty, such grace they have. Magnificence in carpet.
Strong and handsome officer. <laughs> you must have fought. Me. Legion's greetings. I have been informed about your heroics on the beach. Were that I had been there to partake in the battle, but my duties lie here. Sworn as I am to protect Lady Esmeralda from the rabble that would enforce some. I am Septimus, seventh son in a household of nine. Legionnaires all. Me. And two brothers of mine were assigned to Cecil from day one. Alas, both of them have long since fallen in. So fair a lady I have seldom seen in all of Rivalon, my friend. And I have traveled more extensively than migratory birds do. She stands accused of murder. But in my mind, steadfast will I guard her. Never will I waver unless absolute proof of her culpability should be brought before me. And I hope... And what questions are those? I fought orcs crazed with blood liquor. Withstood assaults by ogres wielding clubs made of human bones and teeth. Aye, I've braved the poisonous spear tips of goblins aplenty. But never did I know fear until I faced the undead. We've been stationed here the better part of two years now, alternating between twiddling our thumbs and springing into panicked battle against the orcs. Hard to admit, but without Ahu, we'd have lost this city a long time ago. You ask me, the council would do well to evacuate the rest of the people here. Jake's murder is, in a word, a tragedy. He was well loved in all of Sicil. The Council of Seven couldn't have wished for a better ambassador. That he of all people should... Strong and happy. Lords above, grant me patience. You're a source hunter, aren't you? Here because you think I killed my husband. How many times do I need to state and restate? I am Esmeralda, wife of Jake, and now, alas, his widow. Poor man. We were both so young when we married. He so rich and I so poor. Like I told just about every legionnaire in town, I don't know anything about poor Jake's murder. I want his killer found and tried. But so what happened? Some of them tittle-tattling crab chasers down the pub call me a murderous gold digger and you believe them? These insinuations truly go beyond the pale. Oh, I think I'm getting one of my headaches. Starstone? I've never heard of such a thing. Dear Jake had a mineral collection, yes. As far as I knew, it was one of his past. Do you mean to imply he collected something dangerous? Something that may have gotten him into trouble? Oh, this is all too much. I feel like I'm... Well, what do you want to know?
seems to be quite adamant about her innocence. We need to look for evidence if we want to prove she actually did the evil deed. You there! A moment of your indulgence, if you please. You are the source hunter, are you not? The hero, the whole... No, scratch that. It is so much more than a delight. It is an intervention of fate. Yes, that's it. Fate has put me on this very spot, Mendius, at your service. What is my profession? Well, I'll tell you what it used to be, and that is a man of medicine. But what does a man of medicine do but mend what they call the undead a problem, my friend? But those who know the ways of the fabulous five see no problems. They see opportunity. Oh, it's not merely an opportunity. It is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to become better, to become the full... Of course I do. How Quite right. Adventure at sea here. You and I share the same passion. I never doubted it for a moment. The th mm, Too bad your line of work comes with such measly recompense. Am I right? The wage of a mere soul... Well, I can't say that I haven't. And I can't say that I have. I'm content. <laughs> well, don't quarrel about it on my account. Still, if a matter is divisive, even so, my friend, matters of a pecuniary nature aside, what is life without variety, without spice? To be a sauce hunter must get frightfully dreary sometimes. Am I right? All those... There is no shame in following directives if your masters are worthy of your trust. True enough. We serve a just call. Come now. I refuse to believe such a uniquely skilled individual would settle for a puppet's role. Life's too short to spend it doing someone else's bidding. And that is exactly why I am here. Why fate has put me right by the door to the King Crab. 
so that I could meet you and tell you about the marvel that is the Fabulous Five. Be ah, the Fabulous Five. How I enjoy simply saying the words that describe the most illustrious and celebrated adventurer's guild in Rivalon. Our mission? You'd like nothing more than to enlist, wouldn't you? Of course you would. And you can. Of course, if you still have questions, I shall answer them to the best of my bit. What a gem of a question. Straight as an arrow. Now then. To join the Fabulous Five is to join a fellowship, to join a fraternity, a sorority, a community. The title of Knight, of course. Should you spread the word, should you propagate the gospel of the Fabulous Five, and thereby by now the genial glow of the fellowship must have warmed your heart. It has, hasn't it? But did I say fellowship? I mean family. For like a family, we support one another, cheer one another, see each work hard, fulfill contracts, enlist new knights, and swiftly shall you rise through the ranks. Of course, of course, of course. All you need to do is sign this waiver, and just like that... Join a guild, better the world. Earn a lot of gold? Yes, count me in. You'd fall for this foolish scheme? Guards, you're gullible. Aaron has as many friends as the man with many cheeses. So you're just hanging around the are you? I've always wanted to join a real guild. Indulge me, okay? Are you telling me this is not the most double-faced guy you ever met? We'll do as I say, and there's an end to it. Marvellous. Magnificent. Oh, but what am I saying? Fabulous is the word. You may not realise it yet, but your fortunes, your very life is about to change for the better. So let us not dilly-dally. To business. Your first assignment is ready and waiting, if you're ready and willing. Who? Tom? Doesn't ring a bell. Uh, oh, hold on. Yes, of course, Tom! One of our most recent additions to the Fellowship. Brave kid, smart as a tack. He'll prove to be a wonderful addition to the family yet. Oh, it's a pretty straightforward task, this one. Now, in this town dwells a wizard. Ahu is his name, and he's a frightful eccentric. Scientific type, you know the kind. Favours reason over faith and all that. Not Fabulous Five material, him. His experimental weapons may keep a couple of skeletons away from the city, but many of his other... One of them was a big lumbering apparatus. A frightful automaton shaped like a giant made of steel. It was supposed to crush the undead by the dozens, piloted as it... But you can guess what happened. Did it become sentient? Was it cursed? Whatever the cause, the thing relieved itself of its pilot and headed north towards a network of caves. Now, uh, luckily, there are those in this world who belong to the Fabulous Five, the Braves who eat such monstrosities for breakfast. Go, my friend. 
find this wizard's abomination and claim your just reward from Mayor Cecil in the name of our Hallow... You found new recruits already? Efficient. Proactive. Oh, I like that. Send them to me and I'll sign them up. And of course, since they're your recruits, you'll get a share of... What more is there to say, my friend? You are one of us now. A pro... I'll thank you to leave me be, you old bat. Oh, you think you can speak that way to a... Wizard? Oh, never saw you in the King Crab before. You're welcome to scratch me behind the ears if you like. I am Unsinkable Sam. At least that's what they call me around here. He used to be a ship's cab, but the clipper I was on sank, and I was the only one to wrestle himself free from the waves. The people here were kind and took me in. Been the King Crab's foremost patron ever. A magnificent ship she was. Used to belong to a pirate, I was told. Unlike me, she didn't prove to be unsinkable, though. We hit the cliffs right neath the lighthouse. Not very apt a name for that building, I must say, for no light. The moment I hit the water, I writhed around like I would on a hot tin roof. By some miracle, I managed to reach the beach, covered in kelp and smelling worse than a fish's funeral parlor. But I was alive, and that was more than anybody else could say. So I was. What friends I had. They drowned alongside the rats I used to hunt in the galley. And there I was, all alone. Not that I have it bad here, mind you. I've milk and fish aplenty. Most folks will pet me kindly, and when one of the village girls holds me tight against her ample bosom, I purr up a storm. But I do long for a companion of my own kind. And in that regard, there is no one like Maxine. Maxine, the mayor's darling pet. So gentle, so fair a feline. The grace of her whiskers, that she likes me. I know she does, but when I declare my love, she backs away. I don't know why, I have serenaded her and braved many a bucket of water for my efforts. But for some reason, she is not to be swept. By all means. People make a fuss about them because they endanger the lands around the city. They never bother me when I'm out for my monthly walk, though. But still, I do test them. I mean, they're so unnatural, aren't they? Cats can have nine lives. Oh, don't mention orcs to me. Worse than dogs, that lot. Sank Walrus Willie's boat right from under him. Best. Speak that way to her. Well, so fast to say it, I've got my eye on you, Baron. I am a duke. Back, demon. Back, or I'll... Well, what's this? Oh, <laughs> Medora, you lummox. A thousand pardons, comrade. I'll tell you, it sure does me good to set eyes on another of our order. From Academy West, aren't you? Give Captain Wartruce my regards next time you see him. Heavens, hornets! That's quite a story, comrade. And come to think of it, well, see, I'm here on, well, let's call it a loan from a town to the north of here. Hunter's Edge by name. There's been an attack there, comrade. Orcs. Not your run-of-the-mill savages, either. But ones who've taken dark... What they want in Hunter's Edge, I can't say. But it's my responsibility to send them packing. Preferably with their horns in their suitcases, and a knee-knocking fear of ever crossing paths with... I came south seeking the Legion's help, only to find it tied here in Sicil. They don't have a spare soldier to send northward, and even in my finest form. I can't clear the place of that many orcs without backup. You wouldn't. I trained up in Academy North, after all. We don't cross paths with you Westies all that often, but it's always a pleasure. Medora's the name. Retired, or so the Order keeps trying to tell me, but never out of commission. My hand to your cause and my sword at your side. By the skin of my teeth, comrade. The savages were rounding up villagers when one of them activated a tripwire on our village wizard's property. Fortunately for me, that particular wizard has a penchant for things that go boom in the night. I managed to wrench free of my captor's grip and flee toward the forest. He pursued me for miles, but I'd lost him before I made it into the Sicil Hinner. Well, comrade, 
I hadn't thought of it till you tapped my shoulder just now. But perhaps that's where you come in. I need a contingent I can trust if I'm to take back the town. And the way I see it, you could use reinforcements here in town. I've been scouting Cyseal for some time now, and I believe I've sussed out sufficient intel to help solve the murder of the Counselor. With our minds and swords in tandem, we'll make short work of the perpetrator. More than I'd hoped, comrade. I don't know what in tarnation's gotten into the townsfolk here, but there's enough dark magic running roughshod to topple a small mountain. There's Mayor Cecil's doings for one, and the mysteries of our master Thaleron for another. And on top of it all, the feline menace is lurking at every hearth and shadow. You mean you don't already know, comrade? Their kind can see in the dark. It ain't natural. Now don't get me wrong. I think the mayor's a decent sort, even if he can't hear farther than the tip of his own nose. But from what I've heard whispered around the docks, the old guy's gotten himself mixed up in something not quite on this side of the law. I suspect an illegal sauce artifact or substance is at the root of it, but exactly what or who's given it to him, I can't say. And since I haven't technically been assigned to Cyseal, I don't have the- Fella seems like a humble doctor, but I bet my sword he's dealing in something darker and splints and tonics. A loose-lipped fishmonger let slip that she'd seen our good doctor scale the city wall on two separate occasions, well past midnight each time. What business could he have among the undead? Hardly the habit of an innocent healer, I'd say. Have you ever had the well, you know the old expression. Two's a tea party, three's an invasion. I know this place like the back of my hand by now and the orcs up north will be short work for a trained-up trio of sauce hunters. The likes of which I doubt you could even fathom, old friend. A fantastic plan. With three sauce hunters working in tandem, we'll put an end to all the evils. Another sauce hunter on the team will make us all the more... That's the spirit. Listen closely now. Do you hear it? That's the sound of every orc and... Saffrons, I dare say. Concerns myself with such things. You'll be concerned enough when you realize that reward money won't be lining your pockets. 